Welcome to It's All About the Questions, where learning to ask the right questions can help you achieve lifelong success. Now, here to help you ask all the right questions is award-winning author, international speaker, and business strategist, Laura Stewart. Good morning, afternoon, and evening, everyone, and welcome, welcome, welcome to the show. For those of you who are joining, perhaps for the first time, the reason I say good morning, good afternoon, and evening to open my show is because there are people listening in time zones all around the world, whether they may be listening live, like we are here today, streaming live via video at using restream.io, or if you're just listening on the podcast part, that perhaps you're listening to this in the replay after we've already been live with my guests. Either way, I am so grateful to be here with you every week. As you can see, my hand is still messed up. I'm not going to go into it, but the ligaments are taking their sweet old time to heal. So any healing energy you guys want to send me would be so grateful and so appreciated by me. And uh, if you're sending out good vibes like that, let's just send them out to the world with all the craziness still going on in the world today. And that's the reason why I'm having my guest on the show today, because of all that craziness in the world. I hear from my listeners and my clients all the time. I feel like I'm stuck in analysis paralysis. I know I am. I'm trying to order new desks after the mold situation upstairs, and I'm going back and forth and back and forth and stuck in this this groove of I can't take action. And I've always been considered by everybody who's known me as somebody who gets more done in the average day than anybody. And I feel like I'm stuck there. So my guest today is Rob Actis, and he is just somebody I've known for over a year now, and I am grateful for his friendship, his guidance, and his energy, because he is amazing. And he is the author of the number one best-selling book, The Law of of attraction, law of action, not the law of attraction, the law of action. Because you know what? You can't just sit back and wait for things to happen. You need to do stuff yourself to make things happen. So I'm going to bring Rob on the screen here, and we're just going to talk about really how you can learn very quickly, very easily how to take action, even in your inaction, learning how to take action. So let's bring Rob on camera right now and on screen. Rob, thank you, thank you, thank you for coming on the show. Absolutely. Thanks so much, Laura. Happy to be here. And uh, so great to uh, share my journey of why it's so important to live a life of action. And, you know, you mentioned that this, my book was The Law of Attraction. And it's great that because what it did, a little, little pattern interrupt in that yeah. the law of attraction is so great. I love the law of attraction. And the law of action is the missing link, the missing piece of the law of attraction, because you may want and inspire and motivate yourself and have all this affirmations and gratitude to get where you want to get. But without taking that step of being in action, not a whole lot happens. Things will come to you, but you're not going to it. And so thank you so much for being for having me here. I'm super pumped. Um, if I seem a little frenetic or a little crazy, uh, I think everybody in our circle, especially a lot of thought leaders and people that are inspirational and motivational and transformational have been spending, oh, I don't know, 48 hours a day on Clubhouse just, just downloading all this information. And, and so I will say that I haven't slept in, in a month. And uh, it's amazing <laughs> And I know you know a lot of people that are the same way. So if I seem a little frenetic, actually, that's just me with my ADHD. But I am thrilled to be here, like absolutely thrilled to be here. I cannot get enough of sharing my journey and motivating people to live a life of inspired action. It is so, so important. It just makes for an incredible life. So I'm strapped in and hold on and bring on the questions. All righty. All righty. So let's start with Clubhouse since you talked about it. Um, I'm on it. You're on it. You are on it like all the time, my friend. (laughs) I mean, I keep getting alerts because I set it up. If ever Rob goes online (laughs) to Clubhouse, please tell me that Rob's online, right? And I'm not doing it as much as my listeners know and you know, I have something called sound-induced vertigo. So to be constantly on an audio app, where people's audio quality is based on the room they're in and their phones and whatever can be problematic for me. So I have to take it in smaller doses and I pick and choose who I want to be in a room with like you 
You're like one of the few rooms I, I pop into when I do. But oh, I, I want to talk about Clubhouse for anyway, for the listeners who are not familiar with Clubhouse, it is the latest, greatest social media, so to speak, platform. It's invite only at this point, iPhone only at this point. I mean, iOS only, actually. And it is audio only. So people are opening rooms. They're having conversations. You probably heard Elon Musk is out there, a lot of different people. But in terms of that, Rob, because I see this so often with my listeners, they get subsumed by social media. And that leads them to not taking action in other areas of life. It's like they're almost just following and rumbling along like a tumblebead. Where should I go next? Where should I go next? And I know for you that that's not the way you recommend using these platforms. Like you say in your book, The Law of Action, there's a process. You can't just keep doing, doing, doing. There needs to be a plan, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. So talk so, about that. So with Clubhouse, when I got on, and a lot of people have done this, I was on for like 40 hours straight. Like I didn't <sighs> sleep. Like I didn't sleep at all. And I wasn't even really on any stages or anything or any rooms. I was just, I love information and I love a variety of information. I have been in so many different rooms. And so I was just getting the lay of the land and I, I just was watching and I'm like, this is, it's, it's incredible. And I stopped and I got off and I want to have the listeners understand and the viewers understand the power of this. So a lot of people don't understand what Clubhouse is, and I really believe it's divine intervention. And I don't believe that it would have happened had there not been a pandemic. People are at a thirst for information, and they're at a thirst for connecting. So I was on pub, uh, Clubhouse like a crazy person, and a lot of people are. Just know that if you get on Clubhouse, there's a good possibility that you may never leave for the first. And I know people that are on it almost 24 hours a day have been on for two months that way. And it's amazing because of the information and the ability that you have to communicate with people, not social media. Um, to give an example, Guy Kawasaki is one of my bucket list people to meet. And I met Guy Kawasaki on Clubhouse and I had a conversation with Guy Kawasaki. It was a small room of like 10 people. And we were having a conversation like this, except it wasn't video, it was audio. And he was like, well, that's a really good point, Rob. And we're talking back and forth. And I'm like, Am I really having a fireside chat and an intimate <laughs> conversation with Guy Kawasaki? And it was just right. amazing. Um, I don't hang out in a lot of the big rooms. You know, I was listening when Elon Musk was in, and that was incredible because he was just talking. And conversation and connecting is so important. Now, what I have done is I decided, I planned, and I took massive action, and I came up with an all in a plan of how I wanted to be on Clubhouse. And it's very, very intentional. So my intention is to give and give and give and give incredible value. I don't leave anything on the field. So you and I are both category directors for Podcast Magazine. Steve Olsher has created this thing called Club Pod, which is exploding. We have over 30,000 uh, members of Club Pod. Now, a lot of people that don't know Clubhouse are going to go, what is all this stuff? It's a club inside of Clubhouse. And you, when you get Clubhouse, you'll come back and you'll listen and you'll understand. It's what we've done. He's done is created a platform. So every time um, we go on and there's a lot of people that are in Club Pod that are incredible, incredible podcasters that are sharing their knowledge. And we create these rooms and they're virtual forums where you can interact with. We bring people on stage. You can ask questions. It's like interactive talk radio, but in a conversation. And, you know, I don't, I don't necessarily always go with the flow and I just do what I feel in my heart and soul to do. So I got on and I was going to do an hour, the first club pod room that I did. My room was break through fear, achieve podcast success. So that's what I was committed to. And what was amazing is the room went for four and a half hours and I wasn't even tired and I gave everything I had. Um, and what I also love is that the right people find you on clubhouse and you find the right rooms. 
it's like the there's so much divine intervention it's it's incredible what has happened since i've joined clubhouse even an example of last night if you are open to possibility and you go on and you just you just do you boo and you if you want to elevate your platform you just get on there and you give and you give and you give incredible value and the people okay, that are doing okay. that so me, are rising just, to the top okay let me just put a pause there for a second pause. it's very easy to get absorbed by these Absolutely. platforms but yes. I know you, and you've mentioned the word intention, and you mentioned the word decide, and you mentioned the word plan, and you mentioned the word action. Can yes. you take take my listeners through what that really means? Because there are so many people out there that just get consumed, right? And they're just floating aimlessly, and they're constantly trying to gather information and learn new things, and they get frustrated because... When they get off those platforms, they realize two days have passed. Right. And they've not moved forward really in things that they f want to do or need to do. So, how does somebody begin to actually take action on these things? So, if you're someone who wants to elevate your platform, Clubhouse is the most incredible platform. If you want to raise your platform in your business, Clubhouse is a way to do that. If you want to ele elevate your platform as a thought leader or as someone who is a coach, whether it's a, a business coach, a relationship coach, a sexuality coach, um, a, any type of coach or, or teacher, you can do that. The connections that I've made have been off the charts. So the main thing that you want to do is you want to focus on your why. So you're, when you decide, it's all about your internal why. What is my why? I want to motivate, trans, trans, you know, uh, transform people's lives and inspire them to live every single day like they want to be alive, to know that every single breath that they take is important and that it is not guaranteed. At any moment, your life can change. So I am on a mission to change the world and have people live a life of inspired action, to create momentum in their life and have the happily ever after that they all deserve. So what I have done in regards to being on Clubhouse is very intentional. And I'm very, very intentional. I know exactly what I want to get out of this. And I know exactly the process that I'm doing. And what my plan is, is that I'm getting on. It's not about me. It's all about how much value and how much impact I can have in a positive way on people's lives. And what the best part about Clubhouse is, the, the top, top gurus and leaders and, and uh, you know, amazing people that everybody's all looked up to because I've had millions of dollars to promote themselves, a lot of them are not succeeding on Clubhouse. And the reason hmm. is, the reason is, is because they have a they have this polished show that they do over and over and over again. Clubhouse is not right. recorded. It's live. So the cream is rising to the top. It's shifting people ability to get on a platform with three and a half million people and being on a stage that they never could. And so people that never had a platform that have these incredible messages and incredible heroes journeys to share are getting elevated in ways that are unheard of. Okay. And so... so you know, I don't want to make this whole show just about Clubhouse, right? Yeah, I want yeah. to take people through, because, um, you know, I, I think Clubhouse is really great. But you said a couple of things in there, Rob, that to me are in are, are something I want to dive a little deeper into, okay? Dive so deeper. It's deeper, because, you know, deeper. I like the deep conversation. Deep conversation. So you have this intention of being this person out there in the world Yes. And then you said you planned, but what does that look like for you planning these different pieces? Because a lot of people just go to action, right? And then it kind of falls apart because they're just throwing things at the wall to see what sticks. And that's what they consider action. I don't see you as the person who consistently keeps throwing things at the wall and that's what's making your 
time on Clubhouse or the other things you do have sticky action that leads to your intentional success where you're going. Am I incorrect in that thought process, Rob? Um, I don't want to say incorrect. Um, I look at a different, a little bit differently. So what I'm all about and the law of action is about is creating momentum in your life. And so imagine you're a bicycle and you're going up a hill and, or even just, you're just on a bike and you have to start slowly. So imagine your bicycle and you're like, decide, plan, act, decide, plan, act. And you, and then all of a sudden you have, you have inertia and you have momentum. So the law of action with decide, plan, act, when you create momentum in your life, it gets easier and easier and easier. So the most successful people that I've ever had conversations with, they all have this in common. And that is they have momentum in their life. So it's super cool to adjust. So you can decide, plan, act. So like, for example, I'm hungry, make a sandwich. I'm hungry. I don't know what I want. Um, I have uh, asparagus, cucumber, uh, tuna, and I have garlic and I have butter lettuce. I'm going to make a sandwich. Oh, and I have uh, ranch dress, not ranch dressing. I have uh, wasabi. So I'm like, I'm hungry. That's what I have in my refrigerator. So I'm going to make this sandwich. I'm going to decide I'm hungry. The plan is I'm going to, I'm going to pull all this stuff out. And then the action is I'm going to put the sandwich together. I'm going to eat the sandwich. And I'm going to go, I took the action of making and eating the sandwich. And I'm like, that was not a good action. However, I know that if I make a sandwich, I was fulfilled, but it's not what I want. So I can adjust. I'm like, okay, next time I'm going to use two pieces of bread and I'm going to try different ingredients. So the great part about action is that it's okay to fail. It's totally okay to fail. And you just shift, pivot, and adjust. And it can be like just a little to the left and just a little bit to the right. And what I believe and what I've discovered, if you are in your flow, like you're in your wheelhouse and doing what you're supposed to be doing. It's very frictionless and everything flows. So I had a day spa and I was with a business partner that was a friend of mine and we were doing really well. And it was not in my flow, it was taken away from me delivering my message and me doing podcasts on guests and stuff like that and getting the message across. However, I was making money. Um, long story short, my partner decided that she didn't want to have me involved because I had elevated it. So she didn't think that there was really anything that I could add more value to because she already had it. And she's like, Hey, if I get rid of you, I can have double the amount of profit and I don't need you anymore. So right. she crashed, burned the company. And I, wa- I, I got totally screwed over and she's now restarted the same thing, doing it exactly what we were doing without me. However, the best thing is if you look at the way the universe works is that there are signs and I just feel so blessed that that happened because since that happened, I became much stronger. My message is much clearer. I'm most more focused and the day Oh, it's so, mo- oh, the day that I let that go, this was one of my dearest friends, my inner tribe that betrayed me and it killed me and I could have sued her. I was ready to drop a very large check to a law firm and sue her. And then I thought, and I'm like, why do I even want her energy in my life? That's not what I'm about. And the day, the day, day, almost like to the second where I was just like, you know, I'm letting this go. And I signed a settlement agreement for nothing. And it was a hilarious settlement agreement. I'm just like, yeah, whatever. Okay. Um, (laughs) I got the checks. I didn't do anything with the checks. And um, the day that I actually came to the point of peace with it, like I made this settlement and I came to peace with it, my whole life transformed. The universe said, Rob, we, you got this. And all this opportunity just magically appeared. Not even just divine intervention appeared in my life. And I, it's been transformative. Like I'm in such a position now that's far greater than doing a day spa because I'm using my voice. I'm using my message. 
I'm using my heart and my soul, and I'm impacting the world in such an amazing way that I'm in flow. And I look back to times where I owned a smoothie franchise, hundreds of thousands of dollars we cost, and it wasn't my flow. I'm not there to make smoothies. I'm there to really use my voice and transform the people that need to hear this message. And so when you are in flow and you do what you're supposed to do, you notice if you go left, there it just doesn't work. And then you stay right on the track and you know what that track is in your heart and your soul. And it's not about money track. I'm talking about just the feel inside you. You know you're in flow. Your life is magic, like just absolutely magic. You can't wait to get up in the morning. You can't, you really don't want to go to sleep because you don't, you, you just, you actually don't want to sleep, but you, you do that. It's just such a beautiful, it's just so magic. So when you create momentum, that the universe sends a message to the universe that says, Laura, you've been playing here. Now you're playing here. And what that means is we're going to bring new opportunity into your life and you'll be amazed. People will come into your world that you never thought possible, like ever. It's all about raising your vibration and being your true self and being in flow. And that is living the law of action. That is so powerful in so many ways. And it had me thinking about several different scenarios, stories you told inside your book. You know, I've been there with partner situations, falling and feeling betrayed. I personally have been there um, a couple of times in my life. And, you know, when you were going through it, my heart was with you and my prayers were with you because it just stinks. It sucks. But when you look back at it, typically most of these things happen for a reason, either because you were going down a path you should not be going down, or you weren't intentional about it. Like I know for me, one of my situations that happened was I took my eye off things. And I was just like, well, it's just going to happen, right? I didn't have my plan. I hadn't decided. I just literally vacated part of the process. And it, t- it comes back to bite you most of the time. Like your momentum, as you said, on the bicycle, your momentum just stalls. And it's like you're going through thick layers of muck and mud and you can't get through it. When somebody recognizes that they're in muck, Rob, and they're so stuck and they're going around in circles and circles and like they feel like they're on that Ferris wheel, but it never stops. (laughs) What would be your suggestion to somebody to somehow slow the wheel down so that they could stop and, as you said, decide, plan, act, but begin to be, make some decisions and some plans. Because I know a lot of people with everything going on in the world, they just feel like they're on this Ferris wheel and they can't get off of it because, you know, they need to keep working that going nowhere job or whatever they're doing. And I want to give them some hope. So, first of all, my heart I can feel a lot of people, uh, look, I don't have a perfect life. I just lost a business. And I have a lot of friends that have lost businesses. I know people that have lost jobs. Uh, it's, it's a really hard time right now. And what I can tell you is we're going to get through this. We are. I, I know we are. Um, we're going to be the phoenix that rises from the ashes. And we are going to get through this. And we're all becoming stronger in different ways. It's, it's amazing. So what I would say, if you're stuck in the morass and you're on the Ferris wheel, the, and that's why I smile. People are like, it's kind of crazy looking at me and I'm smiling because what I do when I'm in those moments is I stop and I give gratitude. And that is the most powerful thing. If you're just in this morass of bullshit, I don't know if I can say bullshit, but I just did. But when you're in a morass of just chaos and yuck and ugh, you do have blessings in your life and I give gratitude. And the one thing that I say all the time, that's the most powerful to me before anything else is I am so grateful to be alive. 
I've had many near-death experiences, and I'm so grateful to be alive. And when I stop, and I've got a lot of energy. I mean, come on, a Mr. Action. I have a lot of energy. No, and you I, energy? Ooh, no. Yes, 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 I do. And so I stop. And if you will do this, and this is not my invention, but it's what I have done for a long time, is stop and give gratitude and be so grateful before you go to bed at night and the second you wake up in the morning. When I wake up, you know, my eyes are closed. I'm sleeping and I don't move when I sleep. I'm just like this. I'm a, just like dead pretty much. And I wake up and you wake up and your eyes are closed and you're awake. The first thing I do is I'm like, I am so grateful to have another day of breath another day. And then I, you know, the people in my life and the opportunity that has been afforded to me. And I then, you know, so being alive and health and then the people stuff is at the bottom of my list. Like it's really, I go down the list of all the people that are in my life and I have some amazing people. If you do that, your mind just like resets, you know, like, wow, even if I lost everything, I still have these credible people. And that's all this world is. And we're discovering that in this pandemic, we only have people and a lot of us are missing that. And that's one of the things that's the hardest thing. I know people that are losing everything, but the one thing they miss the most is I can't hang out in a backyard and drink a beer by a fire with a bunch of people and have fireside chats. And so people and gratitude and whatever lights you up in the world, if you stop and do that, it all kind of goes into perspective. And I know it's hard and it's been hard. I mean, as an extrovert, this is like the most painful thing that I've ever experienced in my life. I, you know me at conferences, I hug everybody. I am a touchy feely guy and um, men, women, It doesn't matter. I love connecting on a human way. And that feeling that that connection is so important to me. I mean, I was going at a fever pitch of being around amazing people, having all these in-depth conversations. That's why I think Clubhouse is jamming. But I miss all that human touch. And there are millions of extroverts like myself that are crashing and burning. And I would invite all the viewers to to really reach out to the people that you know that are extroverts. We'll act like everything's fine, but we are missing interaction so, so much. You introverts are like, God, this is the greatest thing in the world. I don't have to talk to anybody and blah, 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 blah. And it's just like, uh, you know, that's not us extroverts. So if you're an introvert, reach out to the extroverts. They're needing it. And if you're an extrovert, let your guard down and let people know in your life that, you know, within the boundaries that you're all feel comfortable in get more interaction with people and, you know, get on clubhouse or get on zoom calls. And if you can be with, you know, people in real life and you're comfortable with that and that works for you, um, do it. We are so deprived of connection. And I think that's why all the podcasts are joining are, are loading up all the zoom calls and the clubhouse and, and uh, people are just chomping at the bit. I was thinking the other day, you know, when this lifts, someone said, oh, it's going to be over in March. And I'm like, yeah, I don't think so. But it feels like I've been in prison. Like, it just feels like I've been in prison. I, I'm not a, I just, I I don't like that I have such restrictions. When I meet someone, I'm like, okay, can I touch you? Can I shake your hand? Can I give you an elbow punch? Can I hug you? You know, what? And it's been, it's been very difficult. And there's a lot of extroverts that are having a hard time. So this is a time for reflection. And I have grown, I have grown in my spirit and my heart and my soul amplified by hundreds, if not thousands of times. Who I am today is not who I was on March 12th, 2020. I am far different. So for you on that circle of, you know, you're just going around and around and around, you found through reaching out to other people through now Clubhouse, but other formats that you were able to help yourself sort of get off of that. I'm stuck. I'm stuck. I'm stuck. I can't do what I want. By the way, when we see each other, we are massively hugging, by the way, massively, massively hugging. 
Um, like you, I've always been known as the person that gives massive hugs wherever you go. I helped a friend back of room at an event with um, close to 700 people. And she said, hey, can you just do me a favor when we open the doors? Can you just hang out there and hug people when they come in? So I hugged hundreds of people every break. <laughs> Awesome. And it was the best thing. It fed my soul. It lifted me up and gave me the energy. But for you and others who had a way of doing things that we're probably never going to go fully back to. Yeah. How did you make that decision? And I know some for some people it's like, I just decided. Okay. But to get clear on a decision for a number of people can be very difficult. And then to create a plan around that decision that lays out like your sandwich scenario, don't put right. the mayonnaise on the outside of the bread because it's kind exactly. of messy when you go to eat it. Right. Um, and then it's not just taking action, you've got your plan and you're taking action on a piece of that plan. So my, I guess my question, Rob, is, for for you, because you've admitted you have ADD and ADHD and a lot of entrepreneurs, that is what makes them so exceptional, oh, right? Yeah. How do you get yourself to just I'm do kidding. that? I was kidding. I, there's no one in the room. I was just like being a squirrel. I'm like, what's going on over there? What is that? What? What? <laughs> squirrel. <laughs> squirrel. The best part um, of the movie. Um, squirrel. Yeah, yeah, squirrel. So, oh. Oh my, didn't you put this away? Okay, no, I'm kidding. So what I do is I live in the very present moment and it's the one gift that I can give your listeners and viewers is to really take time to breathe and live in the present moment. If you, look, we're in a worldwide pandemic and it's crazy out there. You know, um, my 2021 bingo card says alien invasion is the next thing that I'm going to cross off because everything <laughs> else has already been crossed off. I mean, it's, nothing's going to surprise me. Anything that would happen today like, I don't know if you noticed, but if you watch the news, whatever, nothing surprises us anymore. Like, nothing. And so if you live in the very present moment, it frees up a lot of stress and morass. Because when you're living in the past, and we all have crazy pasts, and you read my book, so you see kind of like the homogenized version of my past. I've had a terrible past, but I don't live in my past. I can reflect on it and go, ooh, glad that's my past. You get depressed. Like, oh man, I've had the crappiest childhood or I did this or yesterday sucked or my partner left and blah, 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 blah. And really that's just story. It's already happened. You're not there. And if you live in the future, like, oh my God, aliens are going to come and invade us and they're going to be cockroach people and blah, 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 or whatever meteor is going to come. And you're reacting to things that haven't happened and you're going to have a lot of anxiety. So if you would just stay in the very present moment, it frees up, like even your day, like, oh my God, at five o'clock, you know, I'm not going to get all my work done. Well, that hasn't happened. So you can decide and you can plan and then you can take action so that that doesn't happen. And so when you stay in the very present moment, it frees your mind and your heart and your soul to just be at peace. And I like being at peace. You know, I have lots of energy and I move really fast, like really fast. And I, I get a lot done and I don't get a lot done. And if I worried about it all, I'd be a freaking mess. And if I reflected all the time of my childhood, I'd be a mess, but I've learned to just be present. And that involves, I meditate and I really just take times to just, if I have a crazy day, I'll just stop for a moment. Gratitude. I'll sit in the chair and just quick. And I'm just like, all right, nothing is happening right this moment. I'm in a chair, nothing else exists, and I'm in a quiet, empty room, and it all goes away, and then it can happen again. And just slowly go about your day. A lot of people worry about what's going to happen in the future, and they don't take action because of the consequence, and they're already reacting to the consequence of what they already are worried about happening and hasn't happened yet. You know? Whether they're going to get fired. A lot of people are like, oh man, on Friday I'm going to get fired. It's Monday. And then they're a wreck all, all thing. And then what happens is you weren't going to get fired. And your behavior from Monday to Thursday, your boss is like, man, talking to other people like, I don't know what's happened. But, you know, Steve is just dropped in performance from 100% to 20%. I think we're going to have to let him go. You've created your own self-fulfilling prophecy. Right. So if you live in the present moment, 
then you get to have your blank canvas and create every single moment. And that is living an extraordinary life. And that is something that will make life a joy. When I was laying in bed, you know, you know, I had a blood clot and I was trying to not die. Um, I was in the very present moment because when I would think, oh my God, I'm going to die in an hour, a day or a week. That's what got me through it. And I had some really dark times. It was really scary. I have a, a daughter and I, I'm here for her until I die. And I'm not planning to die as anytime soon because I want to be there for her. And stay in the present moment, it allows you to not get stuck in the story of your past or what could happen in the future because it hasn't happened yet. So don't react to stuff that hasn't happened because it hasn't happened. Just live in the present moment. When I hear you talk about that, number one, when you talked about how you took a pause and you sat in a chair and you just went, I'm sitting in a chair, I'm having this moment. I felt my whole nervous system calm down. Yeah. <laughs> so as you were just saying that, my body was reacting to, okay, just be in the moment in the chair. And it was a total unconscious thing. It just happened. So thank you for that in that, in that moment. And for some people, it seems like it can't possibly be as easy as that. And then they say at the same time, well, if I'm in the moment, then how am I having momentum towards my goals? When you're in that moment, what are you thinking to enable you to move towards your goals? Have you ever seen the movie Finding Nemo? Oh, I love that movie. Okay, you remember when the turtles are going to Australia and they're in that freeway of water, you know, that waterway? Yeah, I'm just going to go like this, like I'm right. a turtle. Exactly. So if you look at that, you know, you can get out of that fast moving thing, that fast moving waterway underwater. I don't know what it's called, the Great Barrier Reef or something. I don't know. I went to public school. Who knows? I don't know, but I don't Isn't know. That. I didn't pay attention in school. Yeah, whatever. So if you look at your life in action, so I can stop and take a pause. And I can also then re-engage my momentum just like that. I can just go right back and because it's always going forward. And the one thing that I want to share with, with you when you said, how do you do that? And how do you get in that space? So take a moment. But when you sit in that chair, I'm very mindful. And a lot of people aren't mindful or present in the moment. So like when I was telling that and I sat in the chair, I was sitting in the chair and I could feel my butt sitting in the cushion. And I could feel my body relax and I could feel the leather on my back. I could feel, you know, the, the movement of the chair. And I really was present in the very moment of that mindfulness. And people aren't mindful in this world. They just go through so fast. And so the one thing that I invite people to do is to be mindful and the way you can start being mindful and you'll realize how disengaged you are with you is to drink a glass of water. So if you drink a glass of water, you decide you want water, you plan, you're going to go get your water, and then your action. So you have the glass of water in your hand, and you can feel it in your hand. You can feel it's cold or hot, and you can feel the texture on your skin. And then you're like, you feel the, ex, the, mo the muscles in your arms slowly coming to your face. Your eyes react to it, and you're very present of what that is. You put it to your lips. You can feel the glass to your lips. You can feel it as you turn. You feel your muscle. You can feel the water cascade over your lips, over your gums, over your teeth, on your tongue, down your throat. And you feel all those moments. And the world kind of stops. You can do it brushing your teeth. People just like, ah. Have a moment. And that's a good time to get really present and calm. Like, it's funny for me to talk about calm. People are like, why do you talk about calm? Because, yes, I move velocity. However, I'm also very much into calm. The way that I look at it is that I don't stop with my massive action. What I do is if you're driving a car and you have a um, tachometer, the RPM, um, whatever instrument, you're at, you're in, you're driving in a car in a standard transmission and you're driving and your RPMs are like 5,000. You're in third gear. Well, you get calmer and more at peace and more present, you get to fourth gear and your RPMs go down. And then you get a little bit calmer 
and more at peace and more present moment, you get into fifth gear and your RPMs go way down. You're actually using less energy and you're getting more done and it's more efficient and you won't burn out as quickly. When you are so stressed out and you're just frenetic and doing everything you're doing in action and caught up in all this past and the present or the past and the future, it, it's very stressful. And the universe will give you hints of like, you need to knock that off. That's what it did for me because I was not calm. And that's when I got my blood clot. I was very action, but all over the place and not taking care of myself. And being calm is so important for your life. You won't have a life if you don't take care of that calm and lower your RPMs. We're not, we're machines, but we, we do eventually run out. We have a certain amount of energy that we use, like a light bulb. It has certain how many hours it's going to be alive. If you leave it on all the time without dimming it, it's going to die a little bit quicker. So you want to take those moments and pause and be mindful and really love being alive. Like love being alive and be so present, like you're breathing. Because some people, like me and many, many others, have had a thought come across their mind of like, uh, I feel like I'm going to die. And that's the most crazy feeling to have. Or a doctor says, you're going to die. You could die. That rocks you. And you need to stay very present because you don't want to look into the future. You want every second of every day is important. And I'm going to live that every day because I want to be alive. And if you do that and you're not facing death, your life will be more fulfilling, happier, joyful. And if you take the moment to pause and be mindful and calm, your RPMs will go down and you'll just feel better and you'll get more done. That, that was absolutely beautiful, Rob. It reminded me of the moments when I was present at my mom and my dad's death. And um, also the moment when I fell down my stairs and broke my foot and I was alone in the house and I had this flash of, I could have died. And what if I can't get up off the floor because I can't get to a phone to get somebody <laughs> to get yeah. me up. But I remember being present when my mom and dad were taking their last breath. And I didn't know that their last breath was going to be their last breath. You know, you see that exhale and you think, okay, any second they're going to take an inhale. But that didn't happen when somebody passes. But in our lives, if we don't, it sounds like what you're saying, what, what I heard, what, what impacted me, Rob, was it made me think about being intentional between those breaths. Absolutely. And saying, where do I want that next breath to go? Yes. What do I want that next thought or that next action to ripple out into yeah. the world? Yeah. And that's just absolutely beautiful and so eloquent the way you put that, Rob. Really beautifully eloquent. So thank you. Thank you. I mean it. I... I've had a lot of near-death experiences and I'm on borrowed time and I'm so blessed to be alive. And I want everybody to live every day like they want to be alive, like really know there's no guarantee. Um, I think a lot of people understood that life can change in a moment, in a split second on March 13th, 2020, when the world just stopped. And no one ever thought that could happen because everybody thinks oh, everything's going to be great. Everything's going to be, you know, blah, 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 blah. Well, I never thought I was going full bore when I had my DVT, I was boxing. I was doing Muay Thai. I was in the best shape of my life. I was kicking butt in my business. I was happy. And I had just broken free of a bad marriage. And all of a sudden, the universe was giving me some signs of like, hey, you know, uh, you, you need to slow down. And I wasn't doing it. I was going full speed ahead. Very, very non-focused. And um, it stopped me dead in my tracks. Uh, I was just getting ready to start getting into a cage and start MMA fighting at 50 years old. And I'm like, wow. And it all stopped. I can't fight anymore. I love martial arts. I can't do a lot of stuff. I'm on blood thinners and my life has been adjusted. Uh, if I bleed, I die. It's, it's not going to stop. 
And right. um, it's very interesting to lay in bed and go, wow, I have so many things that I haven't done. And you don't want to die with regrets. So that's why I really came, came up with the law of action. And because where I take action in my life, I've done it. And it's, it's when you want to take action, and I really want to share this, is it's okay to ask. Like, ask for help. Ask for opportunity. Because if you don't take action, someone else will. Um, something happened. You're gonna, it's, I want you to reflect back to this conversation, Laura, because something's going to be announced in a very near future um, in our space that we all know um, that I'm involved in. And I am elated. It was a decision that I made in about five minutes. Five minutes. No, I, I decided, I planned, and I took massive action. And when, I, when you hear about this, I can't really reveal it all yet. Um, well, you'll have to let people know, and they'll know, because I'll be happy to come back and share it because it's amazing what it is. But there are a lot of people that got stuck in the planning stage and all the analytics of all this, and I took action, and they didn't, and they're going to go, oh, wow, like a massive opportunity. And if look, here's the way I look at it. If you don't take oh, it's action, such a will. I know, but if you don't take action, someone else will. Right. Know that. If you don't take action, someone else will. The way that I and look I, at I, this is this. Go ahead. I love in your book, you say, why not me? Absolutely. Well, you, why not me? So like, you need to know... People are like, oh, you know, my my clubhouse with 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 um, um, uh, breaking through fear and achieving podcast success. People get on there and they're like, you know, I I can't be a big podcaster. I'm not Joe Rogan. I go, you don't have to be, but why not you? Why can't you have a podcast that that people fall in love with and all of a sudden it's on the hot hot charts on Apple. It's on the hot 50 um, in podcast magazine. Why can't you be an overnight success? Why not you? Someone's going to do it. Look at all the people that have had overnight successes that have taken nothing and they've, they've taken massive action and have created multi-million dollar businesses from nothing. Why not you? You know, right. I, I say, why can't you be the top podcaster? Why can't you be the top plumber in the world? Why can't I be a top tier voice actor. Someone's going to get are. that job. Well, yeah, well, yeah. But I didn't know that until I decided that, why not me? All these years I wasn't doing national TV commercials. And then I'm like, well, why not me? And then I took the actions to get there. And now I do lots of national TV commercials. Why not me? Why? It's so funny because I know people that were going to audition for The Miracle Morning. People may not know it, but I'm the voice. I'm the narrator for Hal Elrod's book, The Miracle Morning. And a lot of people were like, I didn't, I, I didn't even know that was an audition. I should have done that. And some people actually saw the audition that I know that are voice actors. They're like, I just didn't think that that was a book for me. It just felt like it was going to be a big deal. And I didn't want to, I didn't think, why, right. not, why not me? Why can't I be the voice of the Miracle Morning that has sold millions and millions of copies? And the book has, the audio book has sold close to 400,000 copies. It has transformed the world with my voice. Why can't it be the one to bring Hal Elrod's words to life? Well, I am because I reached out and I took massive action. I did the audition immediately. And I did the audition so quick. He heard me. He was blown away. He loved me. But all these other amazing talents came after him. And he's like, oh, I already gave my word to you that you would be the voice. So you need to go out there and grab that brass ring. Why not you? Why not you when you're sitting in your office and you're seeing other people getting promoted and you're like, oh, they're never going to promote me. Why not you? Why can't you be promoted to vice president? Why? Why can't you start a podcast? You can. Why can't you be a viral superstar on YouTube? You can. Why can't you be a thought leader? Why can't you be on stages? You can. Because someone's going to fill that vacuum if you don't. Right. Like there are opportunities in our life that I haven't taken. And I'm like, why not me? You know, I talk about this in the book about the Bear Aspirin commercial. I, I, 
I do lots of national commercials and it was a huge commercial that came across my deaths. And I'm like, I can't do that. I, I can't do that. I called my agent and I told him, I said, yeah, I'm not turning that audition. I'm just not going to do it. And he goes, okay, so you're going to not do something that you're afraid of getting because you don't think you're going to get it. So you're going to, you're going to actually create an end result before you even try it. Right. And, you know, we just have this unworthiness feeling of like, why not you? You got this. You, we have so many gifts and talents. And I'll tell you, and you're going to laugh when we have this conversation after, why not me? I reached out. I grabbed it. I knew that this was divine intervention, that this opportunity was coming across my way. And I knew this is where I wanted to take things. And I knew that if I hesitated one moment and I got into analysis paralysis of like, I'm going to plan some more. I'm going to do some more research. I'm going to do this. I'm going to hire an attorney. I'm going to do all this investigative stuff. No, I had a gut feeling. I'm like, why not me? Why can't I be the person to take this torch? Why can't I be the person to lead this tribe? And I did it. And a lot of people, when they find out what has happened, are going to go, whoa, I did not take massive immediate action. And they're going to be blown away by what is happening. And you're going to be blown away when you see it. It's like, whoa. And I well, want I you all to know, I want you all to know Take massive inspired action. You can always adjust and you can take little steps to massive action. Like baby step, decide, plan, act, decide, create the momentum. And you got this. Like someone's going to get this opportunity, whatever it is, it should be you. Well, I, I think it's, I can't wait to hear what it is. And I've loved our conversation about your book, The Law of Action. We've been here with Rob Actus. Rob, tell me how people, tell my listeners how they can reach out to you, get more information, buy your book, get to you on Clubhouse, all of those different things. Well, if you're on Clubhouse, since we're talking about Clubhouse, um, I'm easy to find. I'm in Club Pod. I do a room every Thursday at 2 p.m. I have never committed anything like this. It is on my calendar for the next year. Like every 2 p.m. Pacific time, Pacific Standard Time. So Pacific time, every 2 p.m. for the next year, I've committed to be in that room. And it's Breakthrough Fear, Achieve Podcast Success. It's very heart-centered. It's very mindful. Um, it's very emotional. And I will tell you, miracle, <clears throat> miracles happen. We've had people that have been um, asked to do have feature articles about them. I have connected people that have giant podcasts with people in the audience to be on the podcast. It's a miracle room. So if you're heart centered and you're all about just massive action, and I call you out, Lori Lyons got called out by me with my her permission, and she's launching a podcast, and she was just stuck in the planning stage. So things happen. I'm available at robactus.com. That's Rob actus.com. You can hit me on Instagram. My my, It's at Rob Actus. You can send me a DM. I'm easy to find. The book is on Audible. Just go to Audible. It's the law of action. Also, um, check out The Miracle Morning. It's a transformational book. I, whew, Yeah, I'm easy to find. And if someone really can't find me, they can reach out to Laura, but I'm pretty easy to find. So I would love to uh, communicate. Oh, I also have a podcast. It's the Living the Law of Action show. And I'm also the host and uh, uh, audio producer for the Hot 50 Countdown from Podcast Magazine. I count them down from 50 to number one. I love producing that show. It's very, very well produced. It's a hot, uh, top 40, high energy radio style countdown show where I count down the top 50 podcasts. So I'm out there. I'm easy to find. And uh, I hope you're all taking action. <laughs> and you are one of the best graphic artists I've ever seen. Everybody's seen my new logo. That is because of Rob. He created that for me. He came up with the concept after a conversation. So from my heart to yours, Rob, I really want to thank you so much for being on the show today and for your book, but most of all for having you in my life to spur me forward and awesome. to share that with my listeners is all I could hope for. So thank you. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. And I'm not the graphic artist. I'm an art director. I have a team of amazing people. I don't want to take credit. My team rocks. My team rocks. It's a team effort. It takes teamwork to make the dream work. We all have to elevate everybody. It sure does. Everybody. 
All right. Well, thank you. Hang on one second. Let me just close out the show. Everybody, I don't know what you took from our time here with Rob Actis, but I can tell you that this book is an amazing book. And more than that, the ideas that Rob shared with us about being intentional, being present in the now will help you to decide, plan, and take action as he puts in the book and as he shared with us today. If nothing else was taken from today, I hope you know that you can take Why Not Me. You deserve to have everything that you want in life. It's just a matter, as Rob puts, the law of action. Have a great day, everyone. And remember, the right questions can change your life. Have a great day. You've been listening to It's All About the Questions, starring Laura Stewart. Connect with Laura at itsallaboutthequestions.com and download a free workbook that will help you ask better questions starting today.